Hello there. Today we're going to show you how to make a sliding barn door for your house. This one is exterior that I made and uh, I made it for under 200 bucks. All the parts in, paint, wood and everything. So I'm going to give you a look at, uh, at uh, my sliding barn door and I'll show you how I made it. First here is the barn door. It's pretty well the full size of, uh, of two doors put together. That gives you an idea of the size. And it operates really nice. It's nice and smooth. It has the track along the top there. It has a stopper here on the end so that it can't go off the end of the tracks. And there's the wheels I used. And it's just regular glass. I'll let you have a look at it from the inside here. This here, I just uh, routed that out and rounded the edge. That's like a just a finger hole to pull. Because uh, the reason I did that is because if you put a handle on here, when you slide this open to the other end, then the handle would just get broken because it can't uh, go behind there. And that's what it looks like from the inside. I don't, I'm not, not sure if the lighting is good enough for you to see that, but uh, it does a nice job. It lets lots of light in here. We just, uh, we used to have a man door here, just one man door and a small window off to the left and uh, we took this whole wall out and decided that we uh, we do a barn door. But if you are looking on the internet you will notice that the hardware for these barn doors and it looks pretty well exactly what I built there. When I priced it out for this I was looking at about a thousand dollars for for the the track, the uh, pieces for the door, the wheels. And I ended up making this for probably about seventy-five dollars for all the hardware for the uh, for the door, and uh, along with the glass and the wood and the handle and everything for the rest, the total cost of the whole project has come to about uh, just under two hundred dollars. So let me uh, let me get a chair and I'll show you uh, bits and pieces of this. Okay, so first of all, let's talk about the wheels. The, the wheels I found at a place called uh, Princess Automotive in Hamilton, Ontario. They have all kinds of uh, different utility stuff, hardware, all kinds of neat stuff. And when I was in there, I was looking around for these wheels and, um, and I did find them. And they were for a toolbox. And if you look, here is the other part of the, the wheel that I bought. And uh, if you look at it right like that, that's, uh, that's for a toolbox. So all I did was I, I uh, bought it and I took the, the shaft out of it and everything and I ended up with this nice wheel. Now the wheel was rated on the label in the store at, uh, at this, this whole assembly, the wheel and everything was rated at uh, 400 pounds. So, um, I'm well under that, and plus I've got two of them on there, so that splits the weight in two. Um, but all I did was, this is like a hard, uh, I'm not sure what pro uh, material it would be, but I just took it to uh, a friend of mine, he has a machine shop, and he used the parting tool, and I had a piece of the, uh, the rail, and I, I just gave it to him to fit it in there, and he cut me a nice groove right into that wheel, and... Uh, it absolutely works perfectly. It stays right on that track. Um, so let's uh, talk about the, uh, the metal, the hardware for the metal. So, so all of the material for the track and the brackets, that is, it's two inch by a quarter of an inch thick. Uh, the same with the track, same with the piece here on the end with the rubber piece in it. 
it's all uh, it, it's a, it's just get one size and uh, and it does the job. So each each one of the mounting bolts that holds the track right to the wall. So they're two feet apart all the way along. The when you mount it on the wall, I used four inch lag bolts. It's got a 916 head on it, and I think the shaft would be three eighths on the bolt. The spacer here, all that is is a piece of a dowel. And that dowel is, let me just get the measuring tape here. That's one and a quarter inch dowel. Uh, slightly bigger would probably do it uh, as long as it doesn't interfere with the wheel. But the wheel's only got a light groove in it, so it's not going to drop down much to interfere with, uh, with, with any size dowel that you use. And there's those ones there. The bolts that hold these on, um, that go from the other side here, they are a 3 8 bolt, 9 16 head, and they are 2 inches long. These are especially uh, acorn caps that I got at Home Depot, 3 8 inch. I'm pretty sure they were stainless. They may not be stainless, but uh, they've been up for, for now two winters and they haven't shown any rust, so I think they've got some stainless uh, capabilities to them. And the same thing with this, I just put that on. And the bolt that goes through the wheel is the same size. It's a two inch, and it just comes straight through. These pieces here, they are 12 inches long, and it's five and a half from there to the top of the door, and then the rest is down below. You'll notice uh, I've got these little uh, lag bolts put in here, and that's just so that in the occurrence that somebody really, uh, I guess, gets aggressive with the door and slams it open or slams it shut, you don't want it uh, hopping and jumping off the tracks and then falling on the ground. So all I did was I drilled a hole. I think that's a... Uh, a 5 16 lag bolt. It's just a short one. It's I think it's a, an inch and a half long. Drilled a hole in there, threaded it all the way in, and then when I installed the door I just took a wrench and I just walked it up so it's close to the bar. And then same with the other end there so that it can't uh, it can't jump off. Now the next thing is the the stopper. So the stopper right here on the end it contacts the the bar right there does a nice job um, and all that I did was I used a let me see it might look better from down below here yeah I just took a piece of the same material the two inch by quarter inch and I, I had it you know I heated it up and I bent it to a 90 degree angle and this little guy here is a mount out of uh, it's a radiator mount out of a car actually I don't know where I got it over the years but it's just uh, you see it in the light here it's got like a little hole in there to fit in the top of a radiator pin and then there's like a steel bracket that would go around there to hold it in the car and it can move around a little bit and vibrate but it, it won't damage the rad so I've had that from a car so if you went to the auto wreckers you'd probably be able to pick up something like that and all I did was I just drilled the hole in it uh, the same diameter as that rubber piece and, and wiggle it around to get it in there. And uh, yeah, it works really sweet. And as far as this end goes, at the uh, wall, I just used a, a furniture uh, whatever those little rubber guys are called underneath the furniture and it just comes to the contact the uh, the wall right there and it just uh, does a nice job of protecting the end so it doesn't smash into the brick. So let's talk about the uh, wood that I use for this. So the wood I use for this it is all it is is just a 2x4. 2x4 
two by four for the the ends, the middle, the top, and at the bottom is a two by six. It's a little bit wider. Um, the only the other thing I did use for for the uh, material for this is what it's called is uh, a finger jointed two by four. Now finger jointed two by fours. I'm not sure if you know what that is. Uh, you can barely see it in here, but they're like little triangles that go up and down and up and down. It's like fingers, and they put it together, they glue it. It's, it's very strong, but the, the most important thing about it is they are very straight. Once they've glued a bunch of pieces together and they put it through the, their, their, their milling process and it's a finished piece of wood, they come out very straight, and they're pretty strong. So. Um, what I did was I, I purchased all the wood for this and more. I, I bought it from Home Depot, so anything I didn't use I could return. So I had a whole bunch of them at home here. I uh, left them outside for about, oh, maybe a week and a half, two weeks, and I let them completely climatize to the outside and dry, and I picked the best ones, and they, they are pretty darn straight. They all worked out really well for the project. Um, as far as the handle goes here, this is from Ikea. It's a nice drawer handle, very strong and sturdy. We just, it, it, it comes uh, silver, we painted it black. And uh, it does the job nicely. And the only other thing we have to point out is the part at the very bottom. And that's what stops the door from, you know, uh, kind of doing this back and forth in and out and it holds it in place it's like a guide and I don't know if you can see it in the light there but all it is is a I just used a, a piece of metal no maybe I'll have to close it and show you from the other side no I can't quite show I don't know if you can see it but it's a piece of metal and it's shaped like a J. I, I just heated it, bent it, and it comes up. And you can see that there's a groove in the very bottom of the door right there. And the, uh, and the part that sticks up stays in there. And you can see how it, it just goes back and forth and it won't allow it to, you know, blow in the wind. Now this door isn't sealed to the wall by any means. There's a gap here of about, you know, a good th three quarters of an inch. But uh, we've been through a winter now, a couple of winters, and, and the wind does blow in some of the snow inside here, but not much at all. It's very, uh, it's very little. Okay, now I'll show you the construction of the uh, door itself, how I, how I built it. Okay, so here's the door, and I'm going to show you how to join uh, this piece. Let's do it, uh, yeah, this piece onto this piece here. So, Use this piece of wood and this piece, and I'll show you how to join that. Okay, so we're going to join these two pieces of wood. Like so. And um, so I'm not sure if you're familiar with the tool, and it's called a Craig. It's a very slick device. It, you can use this for pretty well joining all kinds of things together, pieces of wood like this. So here is, uh, here's what it looks like. Gives you this little clamping device here. Here's your little uh, your guide for putting the uh, drill in. It gives you the drill and the uh, bit for driving in the screws. And I'll use this Allen key. So. First of all, you want to determine where you want to put your, uh, you're going to put your screws in. In my, on this door project, I put in uh, two screws on this side, and on this side I put in one, so it's in the center of the other two. So there's actually three screws in each of these joints holding, holding that door together. So what you want to do is you want to get that little guy you want to position it on the wood like this. So let's just, I'm, I'm just going to put it here and I'm going to drill out the two holes. 
Okay, so let's show you how we're going to attach these pieces of wood together. Um, so what you want to do is you want to get your, your Craig jig. And these little fingers here on the side, they slide back and forth quite nicely. And they've got all the markings on here, half inch, three quarter inch, one inch, all the way up to the thicknesses of the material. Now, we don't have screws that are going to do for sure. We're going to use inch and a, inch and a half screws. You're going to be using ones longer, but uh, this is the thickness of the material that they're asking for for an inch and a half screw, and that would be a one inch. So we're going to put it at one inch, and once I s you see how this is done, you'll 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 realize this is this is very straightforward and easy to do. So we've set it to the uh, one inch material, and we just want to put it on here. You then want to clamp this guy down. Actually, that's what this little this little guy is for. It fits right in there like this. And then you can use this on it. But you can see my rubber thing doesn't fit, so I just uh, I just leave this off and just go down on top of that piece of plastic. You can also put a screw in there in some instances to hold it down, just to be able so it won't move. So you put that down there, like that, and next you want to get the screw, or I should say the drill. And it comes with a neat little, a neat little gauge right in the box here. And you put the bit in the box, and this one we've got it set at one inch material. So you just slide this collar, this little Allen key, they give you a tool in the kit, you slide it up and down, tighten it right there. And that's it, it's ready to go. So you take it out. And then, all you do now is you just put it in the guide and drill it right down. Until it hits the collar. Let's do this one too. That's it, take our clamp off. And then what it has done is it's, it's uh, it drilled two holes perfectly on a very severe angle for you. And that's where we're going to put our screws in. So let's try this. So here's the piece of wood that you're, you'd be butting right up against. So you just get your which we've got these two right here. Like I say, they're inch and a half long. And by the way, these are these are called particle board screws. They have them at Home Depot, they have them in a few different lengths, and these work perfect with this with this Craig uh, jig. You can get them from Craig. Now here's one from Craig and it's a silver one. It's a, it's a little bit special, but not really. It's, it does the same thing as the other ones. You pay a little bit more for these. It may be worth it. Uh, but uh, these guys work just as well. So you just take them and you line up your wood where you want it to be. And then put your screw in. You get out of the way for the camera. And you just you run them down. Nice and flat. Actually, this one isn't perfectly perfectly aligned. The table's a little bit uneven. Um, otherwise, it would be perfectly flat. And then uh, on the door there, I just put one more in the center. Now these two, I did spread them apart. So you can, like I said, with this jig, you can put it over this way further, drill the one hole in there, unclamp it, move it over, drill the other hole there, then do the one in the center on the other side. So that's what I did. Okay, so there you go. So. Okay, so once that's done, you've got all your holes drilled, you got the door made and everything. Then what I did was, I found out that if I got some 3 8 inch uh, dowel, just regular wood dowel, that you get this, put a little bit of glue on the end, and put this in the hole, and 
tap it in there and you can see how that fits pretty well perfectly in there. So then you just take your saw, a hand saw, cut that off there, glue it the other one and go along to the malt, leave the piece protruding out. And so once they're dry, then you just take a, uh, a saw similar to this. This is, I think this is called a, a Japanese saw. And uh, it's got these nice sharp little teeth on there. The thing about it is it's flexible. It, it's bendable like that. So when you're doing these, when you're cutting all your dowel off, you can just take this, you can flex it, and you can go along there and, and cut it right off, pretty well flush with the, uh, with the two by four. A little bit of sandpaper afterwards, orbital sander, a little bit of putty, and like on my on the barn door that I made, you can't even tell where the uh, screw holes were. Okay, so the next thing we want to talk about is how to put the now install the the, the framework and whatnot for the glass. That's uh, that's pretty straightforward also. So all I did was I took uh, I took some any kind of wood doesn't matter. I think this is cedar, but you can use pine. Whatever you've got, to, whatever you have to cut up, and all I did was I put this through my saw and I ripped it to. This is just ever so slightly over a half an inch, but half an inch is what you want. Perfect. I painted it first. That way, once I mount it and the water gets in there, it's it's protected somewhat. So all I did was first of all, once you've got this built, you got your whole door built. Then what you want to do is is take the. Uh, Take your wood, I hope you can see it. And you just you mount it, well, whichever is front and back, I'll use the back side. And you just want to leave a little bit of reveal on the rear. What I mean by that is, is just leave it the 2x4 ever so slightly sticking out on this side. And frame it in all the way up and around. I use my nail gun, the brad nails, and I, uh, I uh, nailed it all in there. The one thing I did before I actually put that on the, everything was painted, the door was painted, this was painted, everything. I put a nice bead of silicone, well, not a nice bead, I should say a very light coating of silicone on the, uh, the window trim. So that once you put it down, you nail it down, a little bit of sil silicone squeezes out, you just wipe, wipe it off. That way when it, you know, you get a driving rain hitting the door, it's not going to get in there and, and rot the wood out in a short time. It, it, it'll take for it to show any kind of uh, wear. So anyway, so you've taken this, you've nailed it on, you've put a little bit of silicone on there, and you've done all, all four windows. So then all you do is you order up your glass. So you've got this one piece. I'll put it on the back side so I can show you here now, but it's, let's pretend it's on the back. Then you put your glass in. Same thing, put some silicone along the whole, all four strips. Put your glass in, and then you just want to take the same material and put it up against the glass and nail gun it in. And it's it's pretty well done at that point. You've, uh, you know, everything's painted, glass is in, uh, you've got your hardware built, and you've got everything installed, and that should pretty well do it. So I hope, uh, I hope this has helped. If you have any questions at all, just uh, leave it in the comment section and I'll get it on my, uh, on my YouTube account. And I will put any links that I have for the wheels or the hardware in the uh, description area just to help you out to find the right stuff. And uh, until next time, my next project, um, enjoy.